It's your man, LL Cool J, People's Choice, DJ Envy. You know what I'm saying? This is how we do it. Cyberland. You know what I mean? Get away from that mouse, man. Stop doing, putting them dumbass comments on the board. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you know what it is. The People's Choice, DJ Envy here with a legend. Special guest, LL Cool J. What up? What What's up? going on, homie? What up, man? Chilling. Now, let me, let me tell you the LL story. I, I got a lot of stories. I'm from Queens. Okay. And if you don't know about Queens, there's a rock in Queens with a, with a bunch of colors on it. And it's, and it's LL's rock. <laughs> and um, to get to Jamaica Avenue, we'd have to take the dollar van. And we always pass your grandmother's house. Yeah. So we always used to, to get off when we seen the expensive cars out there because we would think that you was at home when you was in town. So one day we get out and there's a Benz out there. So it's like LL's home. So we, you know, we walk past the house slow like five times. Okay. And grandma comes out the house, right? And she goes, what y'all boys want? She was like, is LL home? <laughs> she was like, no, nah, he's not here. But you want to see the plaques? She was like, yeah. So grandma let us in the house, showed us the plaques and everything. Yo, we thought we was... Are you serious? We thought we was LL's biggest... Oh, we was in LL's was grandma's house, boy. We was hype. Yo, they say the righteous are as bold as lions, huh? My yeah. grandmother, I'm talking about, to let boys in like that. That's, That's hot. Right. That's, That's hot, right. That was grandma. So that was the first experience. I so much. Bro. It was grandma's... LL's grandma was the first experience. But how's everything? You got a new album? Um, Yo, the new... I feel great, man. The new music is, is done, completed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um... I'm very, very uh, pleased with it. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I did my job. I feel like it's going to definitely uh, surprise a lot of people because I took my time with the project, approached it with humility. I didn't take it for granted. I didn't try to um, copy off of whatever's going on right now. But at the same time, I wasn't trying to recapture something from you know a long time ago. Right. I was just trying to do something hot. You know what I'm saying? And I took my time with it. And I, I really like this album. Like, this is one of my albums that I feel great about. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really feel good about this record. Now, Exit 13 is the name of the album. Yeah. Your last contractual album on Def Jam. Yeah, last contractual album. Is that, does that mean it's over? It's, it's, that's it? It's a rap? Nah, not at all, man. I'm going you know, to continue to make music. I have no reason to stop. I mean, you know, all my records, you know, even the ones that haven't performed as well as they could have have done over a million records right. worldwide on some level, you know what I'm saying? So, I, you know, the records are still doing very good mm -hmm. and it's, very vi it's a very viable business for me, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's just a matter of you know, putting the right records out and showing people that, you know, I care about the music enough to really put some great material out there mm -hmm. and not skipping over it and cheating them by going to do movie this, do this, this, right, that, right. and this, and not putting out the right type of music. So, you know what I'm saying? Nah, I'm going to keep, keep it popping. Now, we're talking to LL. Now, you know now, your relationship with 50, how much right. did he help you on this project? Because one time y'all came out and y'all was, y'all seemed like y'all was together a lot. Like, right. y'all really, was he really involved with this album or? No, 50 was definitely involved with the, see, I made like two albums right. before I finally made this record that people are hearing now. Mm -hmm. um, the first album I did with 50, we worked a lot on it. Um, he definitely, you know, helped me sharpen my knives and, you know, we, we got, you know, went back and forth in the studio and in the booth and just talking and, you know, debating on music and going back and forth and, and that was a wonderful process. Then after that, I went and made another album, mm -hmm. um, by myself and just wanted to start on it and just keep working. And then after that, I went and made, you know, this record that I have now and I used like two or three of the records that I made with 50 at that time when we started. But the thing was, I wanted to make sure that... You know, 50's my man and I love him, but it's nobody's going to buy an LL Cool J record if they think LL's trying to make a bunch of records that sound like 50. Right. Or trying to make a bunch of records, you know, biting 50's right, style right, right, or right. trying to be 50. That's not going to work for me. Nobody's going to respect that. So, you know what I'm saying? I had to... I don't mind, you know, collaborating with people and mashing up ideas and working on stuff together. That's cool. But it still had to be LL. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. It still had to be L. Right. So... After I, I worked with Fifth and we did our thing together, I went and did my thing, you know what I'm saying? And it felt like, you know what, because there's no way in the world that, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to turn in my last record and, 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 and put my destiny in someone else's hands or turn in my last record and not make sure that I'm totally speaking from the heart and totally coming forth with all of what's inside of me as an artist. And when I say last record, I mean under my contract with Def Jam. Right. I'm not going to just escape and just do whatever. So that was the thinking on it. So, you know, fifth, you know, big up the fifth for, you know, that the, the, the stuff we did together. I appreciate that. The other young producers I got with, I appreciate that. You know, we did. I did my thing, B. All right, now, you know I mean? we're talking to LL Cool J. Now, you said put your life in somebody else's hand. Now, you also, when you did your project, you didn't come out when Jay-Z was at the presidency of, of Def Jam. Mm -hmm. And that didn't seem like an accident. 
Because mm. you were making some stabs. And you you made it make, pretty much put out there that you, you didn't really respect him being president of a label and put out an album. Mm -hmm. now, now, what was your feelings towards that? Yo, my, my, my feelings on that was just that um, um, I respect him as an artist. And I think that, you know, in the 10 or 12 years that he's been out, he's accomplished a lot. And I think that that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we have to be able to separate church and state. You know, and um, it's like uh, I wanted to make sure that there was someone in place who really had my best interest at heart and wanted to see me win. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to say that I think he's a bad person or that I think he's not willing to let others succeed or help others succeed. But I felt like in that position, um, I feel like, and this is just my personal opinion, right. I feel like the president of a company should be behind his desk working for the better the benefit of the artists on that label, mm -hmm. not on tour. Right. And so, you know, I just said what I said. It's not to try to degrade that man. I'm not trying to, you know, God knows I'm not hating on that man. I got plenty of money. Mm -hmm. It's not that it is not that issue. God knows I'm not trying to like like put dents in his armor. It was just a matter of look, I've been doing this since eighty four. My name is L L. These are the things that I need and require. Yes, I admit that some of my music could have been better, but once you decide to accept an album, now your job is to do what you said you was going to do with it. Right. If the album wasn't good enough to be promoted, let's talk about that before you accept it. Right. Once you accept it, now you got to do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? And so that's how I felt about it. Right. It was nothing personal. It was all business. I didn't come out with a record trying to rap about somebody or, you know, living, 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 living in a fool's paradise. Right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect record. <laughs> now, did y'all ever pass each other at all or you um, never seen each other? Uh, we've seen each other in passing, but, you know, this is not, you know, this is, this is grown man business. This right. is not... Um, you know, tough guy university, like, you know, it's not because you, you didn't, you didn't, did your, you didn't crush the couple people, you, you made cannabis, quit rapping. Well, I mean, you know what, the, the thing with that is that I'm not looking for that, because see, a lot of times, bullies, they always get their heads handed you pop to Jamie Foxx in the back of his head. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> These are moments. You did These that, are you did that as well. These are all moments. Right? So, I mean, it's a moment. I'm sure it's, it's not easy disrespecting them, so it's not going to happen. But you know what, when, the, the reality is that you know, when David slew Goliath, God was on his side. Right. You know what I'm saying? And he was on that moral high ground. Right. He wasn't out there trying to pick a fight. Goliath was out there picking fights and trying to be a tough guy mm -hmm. and ended up getting his head chopped off. So, you know, for me, I don't pick fights. And, and this is not about LL trying to be the tough guy and, and, and he, you know, starting problems and drama. I'm not. I'm just not that. Right. It may be interesting for our music and for our industry and our culture, but only if somebody comes at me with it. Other than that, I'm not looking for it. Right. We're you know what I mean? LL. Now, I, I got to ask about the whole Jamie Foxx in this because nobody ever <laughs> spoke about it. Yeah. Now, yeah. it was, y'all were doing a movie. I, 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 I'll tell you the story. Tell me the story. Basically, what happened was on any given Sunday, you know what I'm saying, um, uh, you know, it, it's good because y'all cool now. No, nah, we definitely cool. All right, all right. Basically, what happened was on any given Sunday, I was acting. He didn't realize, like when I was, I was being, I was improving, and, and that's that's a joke in itself because it's not like, what was you improving? Oh, was you like, you know, was you like, you know, trying to de decapitate the cat? Right, 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 right. Like cutting his testicles off? Right, right, like, right, right, what was right. the improv? But I was doing a little improv, and um, you know. Screaming on him and yelling at him based on you know the character and what was happening right, in the right, scene. Right. He took me seriously, you know what I'm saying. So he took it in his. He he felt like he needed to hit me because I touched him. So he was eating his Wheaties that day. Yeah. So he hit me mm -hmm. and then you know. What you was know, your first reaction when Jamie Foxx hit you? Bong! Like what was what was the reaction? Like what the LL thing? Like this, this nigga just hit me. I, you know, my reaction was like now. Like he now, snuffed you in the face? What's the closest hospital? The chest, or what, 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 what's like, the you say, hit me like, what's the closest hospital? Right. Like, <laughs> so basically, you know, I was just standing there and, you know, um, I uh, I had to defend myself. And in defending myself, somehow his helmet got snatched off and he got hit in the temple. Oh. Now, I don't know what happened in the process, but I defended myself and, you know. 
He didn't want to play anymore. I heard him no, was, it was no, separate no. trailers. No. I shoot no. on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I was shooting yeah. on Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah, you know, sometimes we got to take our ball and go home, man. Right. We don't want to play. He no didn't want to play. He said, <laughs> <up>. he said <laughs> <laughs> Now, how was that call? Because y'all friends now, like, what was yeah. that call? Like, was it? It like, was just a little, it was, you know what it was? Mm -hmm. Really and truly, it happens in football all the time. It's nothing new. And it's a contact sport. It was a lot of fights on the set. Right. A lot of people. It happened to quite a few people. Mm -hmm. um, but me and him just happened to be two of the more famous is more prominent people so that everybody know about it but right. you know I mean look man the bottom line is this man you know you know I mean you know I'm not nobody's bodyguard but you hear them love songs and you you could think these is candy muscles if you want right but uh if you put your hands on me you might not you know be happy with the outcome I unless said. you're in the UFC or something Enough so said. you know you know <laughs> let's uh you know let's just stay focused you know I know you know it's love a boy I love right, right, right. all that but you know but let's get things in perspective I'm still from Queens you know all right no, yeah. so we're talking to LL now let's let's talk. The guy might a little more. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. 